everyone. Hey y'all. Hey, hey guys. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the Baraki family. We are the four Baraki siblings. I'm Samira. I'm Rian. I'm Iman. And I'm Mehdi. And we're here today because we want to start a platform that's gonna <laughs> just well, we just wanted to share some of our experiences with you guys, bring you in on our family discussions, and share family meals. So I guess we'll start with this meal. This is um, Ethiopian food. Um, so let them see that this is Ethiopian food. So we are um, first generation uh, American. Americans, our parents are originally from Ethiopia. So we have that Ethiopian culture uh, and ethnicity with us. Uh, we got this from Desta in Atlanta, which is probably the best Ethiopian food here. Yeah, for sure. And that's the only place I eat. Shout and out to Desta. Shout but out to Desta. Desta. But this is not, not a sponsored, sponsored, video. Sponsored, sponsored, sponsored video. But we would love to be sponsored in the next video. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you see this, put this up. Uh, so it's black owned and we're all about supporting our own, especially during this time. Um, so we're just going to give you a rundown on what we have over here. Um, so this is the traditional, um, you know, plate setting for how people traditionally eat Ethiopian food. So we have a little bit of a combination. So this side is more of a vegetarian and this is a little bit more meat based. Yeah, because we are vegetarian slash vegan and we're kind of the meat. <laughs> yes. Yes. Meat, um, chicken, fish. We so but the point is everything is kind of in a, in a circle and it's supposed to be uh, like family style. You share the plate. It's supposed to bring people together. So. Okay. You guys want to so, show a little bit about what yeah. you're eating? Yes. So here we have different type of meats. We have salmon, which is a fish. Dips, which oh, is a I beef. Know fish. This is kitfo. It's like <laughs> like tartar meat cooked in really low temperature. Um, an avocado dip. Um, two veggie um, options here. Another veggie option and a salad. And injera, of course. Do you want to talk a little bit about this, Matthew? Yes. There you are. No. <laughs> I, I was looking over there. There you are. Well, yes. These are lentil. Uh, sambusas. So even though they look more like uh, egg rolls, uh, traditionally yeah, sambusas are actually triangle. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, these are lentil. These are beans. Like and you this. can do. Yeah. You can do anything with them, really. You can put meat, fish, chicken. Uh, but these are lentil, though. So. Okay. Uh, um, so let's get started. Um, can you pass me the water? Sure. Thing. Um, sure. Thing. Pass it down. Pass it down. So a little bit about. Oh, Rian, want to go ahead and introduce? Um, so like I said, this is a vegetarian. Um, so similar things, again, we have the salmon tips, um, we have a bean dip, this is shudo, uh, salad, golmin, which is collard greens, uh, we have some other mashed beans, avocado dip, and yeah, see the cold uh, They're not gonna know. But okay, fine. So salmon tips, misir, shudo, salata, golmin, um, avocado something, and cabbage. You know what's really nice about Ethiopian food? It really like... You can have any type of dietary restriction. You can definitely eat. There's something for you. There's you something, it. something whether true. you're like pescatarian or vegetarian or, or vegan, like vegan them. or gluten free, right? The tiff, the injera's made with tiff. So definitely. there is something for everyone, and that's what's great about Ethiopian food. Definitely. So in this video, we kind of wanted to just touch but down. I think we bit. need to talk about one more thing. <laughs> which is really, really important from a cultural perspective. So do you mind passing me the injera smear? Yes. Thank you. So we have this thing called gorsha, which is feeding someone. And I think that's how we should start the video, right? Like on a positive note. So it's like, it's a form of endearment. You take a little bit of injera. Um, and because they're vegetarians, I'm going to um, choose a vegetarian option here called shuro and you're supposed to feed your um, a family member a friend and it's like literally just you just pop it in their mouth you can't touch their lips with your fingers because that's a no-no ready <laughs> open up take the shuro and then shuro and what were you saying <laughs> uh, before it's I completely really interrupted you <laughs> well the topic for today's video we want to discuss about was uh, being a first generation American uh, as well as being like just a first generation Muslim and growing up and our experiences and how we felt like that affected us today. So we're really hoping this video is going to give you a little bit of an introduction on us personally and a little bit of a, a backstory on us and kind of how we grew up. Um, so whoever wants to dive in. Um, okay, well I'll start. Um, so I'm the second of four, Iman's the first. Uh, our parents came to the U.S. Um, shortly before we were born. And so, <laughs> okay, so we're I would say we grew up with a little bit of culture, but not that much. 
I, I feel like I had a totally different experience. I think I really um, grew up with a lot of culture. Like, I think I'm familiar with my language. Um, familiar, familiar with my fluent. dance, um, music. And I, I'm really, like, hoping to have this, um, you know, passed on to my daughter. I have a three-year-old daughter. Um, so she's ge second generation. Well, technically first generation American because my husband's first generation American. He was not born here. So uh, I think I was I was raised with a lot of culture, and I really take a lot of pride in that because I think that um, as the generations continue, mm -hmm. um, culture will eventually somewhat die down. But it's really important that we are um, the culture keepers, if you will, and make mm -hmm. sure that that's all that's true. passed on. So but I if think, you think about it, mm -hmm. I think all people at the end of the day, like no one is so pure of one hundred. Like no one is one hundred percent of one ethnicity or one descent. So as people evolve, they become mixed with different cultures and different ethnicities and races. Um, so I think it's important to, if you know, embrace the culture that you were a part of and also the one you're raised in. Yeah, I totally agree. But I, I do, I do think that I was raised with culture. How do you, how do you think that you were raised differently in comparison to us? Because I thought we grew up in all the same household. I think you could you could you could um, indulge in similar experiences, but have a, a different outcome. So, for instance, I think out of all the us four, I'm the most cursed in our language, and I think that I take pride in our culture um, more than. I, think I definitely okay. Like none of us speak more. the language fluently. I know that's true, but, but I think some of us can understand it a little bit better. Than yeah, others, that's for true. sure. I'm definitely um, one of them. I feel like uh, what Iman has that's different than the rest of us is uh, there was more dedication for her personally on learning it at like an older age, in like her 20s, I would say. Or the 20s, she really tried to like get to know the culture more. I feel like it wasn't really our parents who started at, started us out with it, who like yeah. immediately like, you know, try to teach us the language and the culture as a whole. It was more dedication on her part. Yeah, sorry. But I think that, um, you know, they, they wanted to be like really fluent in English and, you know, really be immersed in the American culture, mm -hmm. which is why I think they didn't raise us in a super strict, you know, Habesha culture. Yeah. Um, English was our first language. It still is our only language. Um, and I think just even other aspects, even when it comes to like home decor, I think it's been it's always been very Americanized. We haven't really had a lot of like Habesha decor in the house. Our like, dress has been always American, like Westernized clothing. For sure, definitely. Like I don't even think I knew what a Jebana was until I was like in high school. Yeah, um, I think we were our, raised. With we grew a lot. up watching. We were raised on pretty much Disney, so we grew up with that that culture, like TV. All of pop culture, entertainment, and then at the same time, the school that we went to, went an Islamic school, was primarily Arabs and Southeast Asians. I feel like we had that culture mixed with us too, so we didn't really have much of our Ethiopian. You know, yeah, so we actually went to um, an Islamic private school, and most of the students there were from the Indo-Pak region, Middle Eastern. Uh, we were definitely like the only, you know, like black family there. Mm -hmm. Even in the, I think even in the area, like there was definitely not like any other Ethiopians like near us. Oh yeah, definitely not. So I think like that was also def that definitely played a part into our lack of culture, and you know, lack of knowledge of our culture. Um, before I started preschool, yeah. actually I spoke um, Amharic and Yisrael in our in our home with our parents. So they did not speak English to each other until I got into preschool. To us, they spoke English. No, until mom wanted to straighten. Until so clearly we had different experiences we got into growing up. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I no, 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 no. Mom wanted to strengthen her English, and Dad really wanted us English to be our first language because he wanted us to be advanced academically with education. He didn't want us. I mean, uh, actually, bilingual kids, uh, bilingual, bilingual people end up being much smarter. But he wanted us to be so focused on English, so we would be, we wouldn't have a setback. What he thought would be a setback academically. Yeah, so that wasn't that. That was that was, um, that was uh, post uh, entering uh, elementary. And uh, I don't, any I type don't of grade school. I never, I never but that was not pre. Any tape of us speaking any other language. When so we were pre, we were. She's eating with the fork, but that's actually super disrespectful to our culture. Not so just that. disregard that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to cut down so, on the, the carbs. So how do you guys feel like you um, balanced or cut? How do you, okay? How do I word this? How do you guys feel like you immersed yourself in your culture, even though we weren't surrounded surrounded with it? 
So juggling being around people that were like Indian, Pakistani, um, you know, Arab kids. Uh, at times we were, you know, part of other communities as well. But I guess tr trying to balance it out and like not have identity issues. How did you guys all balance that? I think I, I didn't really start to embrace. Well, I, mean, so, I, I think I've raced since, since day one, to be honest with you, because when I went to a Middle Eastern, um, an Islamic the school, the that was um, that was primarily, uh, pride, pride, predominantly, predominantly, couldn't speak there for a minute, <laughs> got Oh, I'm sorry, was it the ESL Pre class? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know, uh, you, know um, you, you highlighted a good point there. Actually, when I was in kindergarten mm -hmm. and public school, they thought they were convinced English was my second uh, language that they were trying to put me in ESL classes. That's because we had an accent, not because we didn't. But speak why did we have an accent? Because, because our we, parents were we speaking a different language. No, we were. Our, our grammar. They were speaking. Our, they were speaking like our grammar English was with an accent, so that's the only that's English true. that we knew. That's yeah. True. Don't touch that. Yeah, Don't exactly. That. And that's why Serene talks like chocolate. So your mom does not. No, what your kids do. Actually, in home oh, videos, yes. there are there are home videos okay, that Iman, well. Iman being hello, mom, hello. What does mean? It's a home video. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, um, okay. What are some personal stories that you guys can share? Um, I guess juggling being like Ethiopian and then being around all these people who are not. So at times, did you feel like oh, you were the only Ethiopian, and when people would ask you about your culture and you didn't know how to answer? Like how how would you guys deal with all that? I, I think, think so even now, that with, by think... saying habasha alish. No, so actually, we should share that story. That's really that's funny. Not yeah, a story. you want to say a story, you guys? Listen. It's okay. It's funny. Just, it's not, not a story. Story. You want share? Share. Yeah. So, anyways, like I was saying. So anyways, when as I was Samira saying, came across an as Ethiopian, I was saying, Samira came Samira across. Was Samira came across an Ethiopian person and decided to really channel her inner Ethiopian. No, I and said it. I said it to each other. No, I said it to our group of friends. No, I didn't say it to him. She so basically she said it to the, she ran it to the, the gentleman and she she meant to say um, what I don't even know what you're trying to say. That's how stressed out I was. I said it to our friend um, group because I, I didn't she, know said, how she just came up to Ethiopian guy that we were able to identify that was Ethiopian. We have a special feature or unique feature that's a what unique is it, feature. What is it? The five head, flat screen. With an addition to the nose. Mm -hmm. What's the nose? And the speaker bar. And um, <laughs> so uh, Samira went up to the guy and just said, Habasha <laughs> Adlish. And um, and if you don't under know Amhari, that Obviously, means, we do you have, have Habasha? And that's not how you come up to someone. And that's not how we, you, you, you construct a sentence in the Amhari language. So Iman, in that moment, never made a full sentence but her in that moment, Iman, in that moment, in that moment, how did you handle it? How did you handle that moment? I left it all, as the gentleman did too. Okay. Okay. So, can you can you say something in a full Amharic sentence, or yeah, give us a lesson, Amhari or Amhari? Amhari was her first language, Pretty so crazy. she will show you a little some some. Well, like you said, it was your first language. Well, unfortunately, yes, our, all our viewers are don't speak Amhari, so I really wouldn't want to talk to them. All of our viewers mm -hmm. are soon to be. Yeah. Anyways. You know, actually, uh, so about a year or two ago, I was actually uh, at our local masjid. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I was praying, and then afterwards, I was talking to this guy who was uh, with the, coming in with some people in town, was visiting, and he saw me, and he he came up to me and he asked me, uh, he's like, "Oh, are you are you Ethiopian?" I was like, "Oh, yeah." Like, how did you know? And, kind of, and then he, uh, I forgot what he said to me exactly, but he said, "Amari atelis." Or, uh, was Amari Nyachichelalu? Iman just said Tichana. Basically, basically, basically asked me, do you speak Amharic? And I was just so caught off guard. Like, I don't think anybody non Ethiopian or Habisha, like, has ever, like, even suspected me to be, like, Ethiopian or Habisha. So I was just caught off guard by the whole situation. But apparently, you know, he was, like, raised around Ethiopians and, uh, and Habisha people. So, yeah, I don't think she had yeah, I think it's interesting. I mean, like I said before, I don't know if we ever really fully embraced it because we didn't really grow up with a full... With First of all, it was just our immediate family, right? We didn't have the extended family around us, cousins, aunts, uncles, grandparents. We only went to Ethiopia growing up once, and then you guys... I went to summer before my freshman year. Yeah, and then I went two more times in the last two years. So, 
you know, we went, to, we went to school with people that went to their their parents' like homeland every summer and like related to the culture, grew up with extended family. Uh, we didn't really have that, and so I felt like that we missed out on like that part of the culture. So we obviously didn't have that to identify with. We grew up with the American culture, with the like somewhat, you know, from what our school was Islamic culture. And then after that, going into college and getting more exposed to other people, you know, now embracing like American black culture and I think trying to relate to that. Do you, do you, do you uh, try to embrace that? Do you feel like you relate to that more uh, growing up and that's why you embrace it? Or do you feel like that's just what's around you more so that's why you embrace it? No, I think growing up, I didn't really like identify, I didn't really see myself as a I don't know. I didn't identify with any particular culture or like any race because so, so we didn't grow up with other black people. I, I felt like we didn't grow you up identified with more like you were more drawn to the Middle Eastern culture. Growing yeah, because that's what all my friends were. We were a little bit dancing. So I think I think one thing we can all say is that uh, we were we were raised with a lot of Muslims. So I think that was the first thing we always identified as. It was just being Muslim, Muslim before it was being I think like was, Ethiopian yeah. and then like even Hurry or like you know whatever else like mm -hmm. being black. Like I think the first thing we always kind of. I guess the only thing we were we, we could relate to with the people around us was that we were all Muslim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what that was. So. Yeah, I don't think we really grew up with anything that was like, we didn't really grow up with like American black people, we didn't grow up with Ethiopian black people, we didn't really have that. And so well, we grew up with Ethiopians. We have very degree, small. Like, but the thing is that they were like, they lived in a different area, like an hour away from us. So we really didn't see them quite often. I'm just trying to let them know that there is a distance to Chicago. Yeah. And it's about it's a 25 minutes. Yeah. yeah, but you don't see them often. You're not going to school. 25 if you want to go to Evanston. You were sweeping half the car right? Come on. So we no. didn't literally grow up with them. Like I think it was something we would see. we would just see them on like holidays, like events, uh, birthday parties, graduations, weddings, etc. They they were definitely not like our best buds. They were like two weddings. Okay, whatever. <laughs> okay, but like I don't think we really saw them, you know, very regularly. They weren't like our we didn't have like, yeah. a, a specific circle of people. We just had like you know acquaintances we would see like on holidays. And even and then, like there weren't really people in our age group. Like we had you know our like two friends and then maybe like one other person. So there weren't a lot of people in our age group. Most of them were younger or like in between our ages. So we also didn't have people that. We could always like hang out with at these events and okay. stuff. So let me ask you another question. So, with all this information, how, how do you guys feel like it's made you now? Do you feel like it's made you want to learn more about your culture? Has it like stirred you away? Are you actually going to say it's like, stirred her away? And you guys are going to say it's going to make you guys want to know more about the culture? So, so what? H how has it made you react now? How do you feel about your culture now? Do you feel like are you like I'm a proud Ethiopian? Are you like barely? I'm a very proud Ethiopian. I, and you know what? I am. A, I think I am a culture keeper, and I do. I, I do recognize that I am. My race is African American. But you're definitely you're, being, you're American, like learning but, your culture now. But you know so. what? That's a form of a. That's yeah. a. That's a form of embracing. But actually, yeah. even though I'm learning, I I have a wealth of knowledge of my culture. Mm -hmm. So I mean, and I, I think like that I do think that there's some people who who don't own up to the fact they are Ethiopian and really don't. Or whatever they want to, who, whatever they are, and they don't really want to take the extra steps to really understand and, and do a deep dive into their their culture. And I think that's where um, they're gonna they're gonna hit a roadblock. Well, I think for me, I mean, I feel like our culture is beautiful. Even though Ethiopia in its own has so many, you know, so many different tribes, so it's hard to like really learn. There, like each tribe has its own culture. So even within Ethiopia, there's a lot. So we can specify. So for those of you guys who don't know, um, our mom is Harari and our dad is Tigray. So I think even within that division, we definitely struggled. We definitely struggled with more identity issues because I think um, both even, cultures yeah. come with so much culture, like different in terms languages, of like language, like clothes. clothing, um, like social groups, all of that. So I don't think even growing up we were very specified. Like I'm not gonna even lie. Like I didn't even know I was. Dad was in hurry until I was like in sixth grade. I didn't even know what a hurry was. Who, 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 shall not, cool. who shall not be named? <laughs> no, who, knew who told me. It spilled it to me. And I came home and I was like, there's no hurry. I didn't even know see. what hurry was. Like, I, I, I was even, raised in hurry. <laughs> I, I didn't thought all Ethiopians were the same until I was in like high school. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, not high school. I don't know about that, but I, I definitely. I, well, I, the time. one, the one major uh, like breakthrough that I learned at like 16 was that there was Ethiopia, and then there was this country called Eritrea. They look just like us. They eat almost the same food as us. But I did not know there was this war and there was this division until I ran into an Eritrean that I grew up with actually. And this whole time I thought he was Ethiopian, but he was Eritrean and told me that there was a war. And he came to this country because of the war, but I did not know that. That's my breakthrough. That's a little That's history really that sad. like. I don't think you so, need to be doping to know that there was some war. Now. You didn't even know that. Yeah, that was just a lack of knowledge. That was a lack of knowledge. Nah, you didn't know that. But I think, but I think we can no, all agree that we were pretty much, like if it's any tribe that we were like able to claim it was definitely being Hari because that's all we pretty much knew yes, for that's a majority true. I mean I this just, one didn't know until she was in mean, whatever I feel like we knew we I think at most point she's definitely the least cultural and and I, but I think we're the most reluctant to yeah definitely you, no, you don't have that's aspirations too. no the thing is you know and I thought about it and I said well wow, like we uh, you know the Ethiopian culture is so beautiful but one with all these different tribes there's like all these different it's like one Ethiopia is already divided on its own. It's not very united, and then it is very united. You know, it's, you know, there's a lot of tribal conflict going on there. Right right there. There. there is tribal conflict. Oh, can I finish talking? But there's please? a lot of co commonality. There is, but still, even now, you know, Laharis are tend to be more together. The Oromos tend to be more together. The Tigris. So it's like oh, there's already division. One. Um, Love it. And then secondly, we're not very connected. We've only been to Ethiopia once, so we we barely know our family there. Um, I know my family. Iman, you don't talk, you don't know them. I keep them overseas. I'm talking. Yeah, I keep them barely. Them. Okay. <laughs> On Instagram, the follow. Okay. But this is my thing. Anyway, you, you, you had the opportunity to Can travel I finish the speaking? world. Can I never finish speaking? To go to Can I finish speaking? Well, when I realized, at this point in life, it's really hard to learn language, especially one that you can't really be taught to through class and how am I gonna learn, right? Mom they don't speak to us and, and you could you can insist. You can I don't okay. yeah, honestly only go so far. No, and I only I don't yeah, I don't live yeah. at home. I mean you can hire a teacher. and and with and Who's gonna teach me Gaysana? Gaysana is definitely one of the languages that have to be learned in the home. I'm hard. At least you can learn that's how you're gonna get by Even then there's not that What if I wanna say hello? I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, realistically, I know, you know, I'm never going to live there. My parents don't even live there. So I would only ever go if and when they go because I can't. There's already a language barrier. I can barely communicate. Then how do tourists That's go? That's their family. How do tourists go that are not Ethiopian? Yeah, but I can't go and not see family. And with them, how am I going to communicate with them? Half of them don't speak that like English that there well. Are, there it's are. hard. Even Rihanna's like, you can't get around without... T telling the, the cab driver exactly where to go. You need to know that. You know you can hire yeah. translators. I'm, even, I'm just saying. Either I'm way, just, I'm just giving. I'm, I'm just letting saying. Know I mean, maybe I'll plan my win in Rome trip in Ethiopia <laughs> and have that experience. Oh but at the end of the day, <laughs> I, I do. This. I don't feel like. I can't do this. No, no I don't feel <laughs> super connected to Ethiopia in particular. The only, but like the only in place Africa, you're in Africa, when I went to Africa and I, and I touched down in Morocco, I was like. Africa, my Morocco. Morocco. I'm saying Africa. Morocco. Okay, okay let, Africa, let's dig deep. Don't, no, let, her, I'm saying don't let her insult let, us. Shut up, Iman. Lord I'm saying, have mercy. Iman, is he doing not in Africa? Samira. Okay, so Samira. obviously oh, I feel, I feel connected. Bless your heart. Iman, no, I feel bless connected with all When she hit Morocco, she felt connected to Africa. Jaiba. Please don't say, don't. Iman, Africa. yeah, it's an African continent. I was like, this is the closest I've been to Ethiopia since 2001, and it's it was what 2019 at the time. You know, a lot of Moroccans consider themselves their race to be Middle Eastern. Middle Eastern is not a race. Caucasian is a race. They, they don't. A lot of them don't. I know, but black. being on the continent of Africa, <laughs> but, but this is very being normal. Being on the this continent. Heads up. This is like, anyway. Um, so, so like, her best friend, talking, talking, good friends. Can I finish talking? Oh my god! Can you eat your plate? No, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not been eating enough. <laughs> you, okay. So what is interesting is one of my really good friends was Ooh. Egyptian okay. in high school. Okay. And she Ooh, and I don't want to. I'm not going to call her name out because I'm trying to protect her privacy. College. <laughs> and we want to protect her privacy, but she was she's a first generation Egyptian, and which is interesting is that she always said, you know, I'm African, I'm black, and her ass did not look like no. Yeah, <laughs> so we're a lot of white. No, not yet. Yeah, I know. Obviously, racially, they're not black. Let, let they me know that. Let they me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me okay. finish. 
And that's where your association comes with Morocco. Because, no, even Iman, though it's Morocco is in Africa, and Africa. And and North Africa. Africa. So it's Africa. And guess what? A lot of those people in North Africa don't consider themselves black. I know that. It just, but, but being in, in the continent of Africa, anywhere and everywhere, but, Africa's a beautiful continent. But so why can't you speak about that? Why couldn't okay. you go visit Ethiopia if you were so eager to go on the African continent? I wasn't so eager to go to the African continent. What? I happened to go there for something else. Okay? Like what? Pleasure or business? business. That's no what I'm saying. Okay, so you know my I business? Think, don't do that. <laughs> okay. I think we should little, dig a little deeper because for some reason you're the only one that seems to have a disconnect with your culture I, I, I got a and, and, and the country itself. No, I, I, like okay, I, said, I, got a, yes. I got a question for you. So this is good. Anyone can answer this. But uh, do when people first ask you, uh, like, what are you? Do you just say you're black or when, do you say you're she she's American? When they she's know, American. I know. Actually, I don't. I was, I, when, when I was, when with they you. I said Ethiopian, she said American. When was this? And you know, we were when sisters. Was this? When and was I was like, where? What? Where was this? When and where was this? We were, uh, we were, I swear to God, we were at some event. Like, oh, some, some what event? event? I swear, okay. you took me to some First random house party or something. Me, what are you? I always say that is a very big question. What do you mean by that? Well, I'm a human being. I'm a, I'm a person. What do you mean, my race? You want to get punched. When people say, <laughs> when people say, when people say, where are you from? I say, oh, what do you mean? Like where I was born? I was born in Chicago. Oh, my parents are from. You but you know, know what like, they mean. No, well, actually, so, so no. what do you say? Because sometimes you say, when they see you in, you know, they see you in LA. Oh, where are you from? Like you live in LA. No, you're, look, no, I'm actually originally from Chicago. Or sometimes you can kind of also tell a vibe based on how they ask. But sometimes I'm just like, what do you mean by where are you from? And I'm confused. Sometimes when I say Ethiopia, people they'll be like. Oh, when did you move here? Or oh, like how long have you been living? You don't sound like you've been so like when I say I'm from Ethiopia, sometimes they don't understand that. You don't say I'm from Ethiopia. You say I'm Ethiopian. But at the end of the day, you know what I say? I'm first generation Ethiopian. That means that I'm not. I'm born here. Both of those questions. What are you? First of all, I hate that question. What are you or where are you from? They're two very vague questions, and so sometimes you have to get a little more specific. Like oh, where were you born? Oh, like, oh, are you originally from here? Like, those are a little more direct questions. Okay, so back to my question that was never answered. Why do you feel like you are the only one out of us three that has such a disconnect from the country, from the culture, from everything? And I think even even when it comes to meeting, you know, like Habasha people, you tend to stir away from it. You That's like your friends to be like American mm-hmm. and not affiliated with Ethiopian mm-hmm. culture. I mean, like for like, reasons. That's for different reasons. I, well, I think and what are those about? reasons? talk people talk about do you do better good and unfortunately it's a Everybody lot of people talks. I feel a lot of people are like they're cordial even if they're in the community they'll cordial to your face like behind your back everyone competes everyone talks about each other's families all that nonsense I think that's every single culture probably but I mean, but I think I definitely okay, but I think it's why a lot of people a lot of people that's part of the reason why a lot from of what people, I've noticed that's part right? of my fish hockey and that's part of the reason why a lot of people like to expand outside of their community because especially being, like I said, realistically at the end of the day, yeah, you want to keep ties with your culture and it's okay, important to be friends with those other people and stuff, but at the same time, we live in America where it's melting pot and you kind of have to learn to step outside of that. Actually, it's not a melting pot. Can I it's a salad speaking? bowl. What? And Ever? that is wrong. With Iman, people like can I you. finish talking? No, realistically, you finish though, your show. You that's, part of, that's part of the reason why. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Moderator. Part of the reason why for you. She had two minutes of uninterrupted. Fighter, Mr. President. <laughs> We grew up with, you know, those two ethnicities, those two cultures, whatever. So, uh, you know, we didn't really experience other people, da 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 So when I have kids, I want my kids to also, you know, experience that, experience Ethiopians, experience American experience, blacks, experience, experience, experience and, like everyone, because that's what they're going to see in life when they go to school, when they go to work, like things like that. So you, can, you can't just like forever keep... A little circle, like eventually, you know, you're gonna expand. Moderate, don't yeah. you think? Don't Moderator? you think? Can I, can I speak? Oh, okay. I, I was gonna piggyback off. Okay, I think this, this, this should be on some here YouTube channel because me and Megan, I, I, I would like to touch. I want, I would like to make something very, very, very clear. Yeah. To people who have similar thought process to yours, mm-hmm. that need to be slightly expanded. And what I mean by that is, America is not a melting pot. You already said that. It's a salad <laughs> bowl. Let me say let me first say this. It's a salad bowl. I might be a tomato in a salad bowl and I might like like a lot of other tomatoes. I might like tomatoes. I love tomatoes. 
Okay? Tomatoes. 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 I now live in Georgia. Potatoes. So, potatoes. Please edit that part off. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say this. Mm -hmm. Eat, I'm a tomato on a salad. I mix with other vegetables. And I'm down on pack with that. But I also like to say that some of my tomatoes on some of the, uh, on the other side of the bowl. Okay, okay, that's fine. You can what I'm trying to say is, is what I'm that. trying to say is, is that you were trying to say that. Oh, when I have my kids, I'm gonna mix them with these people and these people and these little Ethiopians over there, and that tells me already that you already think really low of your people. I never said you said Ethiopian. Can we rewind that clip? Let's rewind that, that clip. I think, I think I think I want my kids to also, you know, experience that experience. Ethiopians experience American experience, experience, experience and, like everyone because and then a, a lot of, <laughs> I think just all people who generally grow up within their culture sometimes you know it's just if you have a bad experience they end up you know uh, wanting to get away from that culture not liking that culture me personally you know like uh, we did so we grew up with Desi people right so I know like Desi people who hate like the Desi culture they grew up they have a bunch of intermediate family around them within the Chicagoland area you know, and they personally, they don't like it. Like, they don't want to marry uh, a Desi. They don't want to, you know, uh, really be involved with the culture or, like, that at all. And I feel like that's just that's just not, like, uh, a thing that comes. I feel like that's something that, like, uh, people in the Ethiopian community have, too. So we, it's not even more a part of, like, Iman is coming from outside the community saying, I want to be more involved. You're more, like, I don't really care. Mm -hmm. But I feel like there are people in that community who are, like, I, I guess we were like, you might, I want to stay in it. And there are people who are like, I don't care to be in it. So I feel like Serene might grow up to be like, I don't care, even though she is raised within the culture. And mm -hmm. I feel like that's- But at least that'll, that'll give her a good foundation where, where she doesn't, where she never has identity issues. Cause I feel like we definitely had that issue. I don't feel like we had identity issues necessarily, but like- I think I, we definitely did. We, did. we didn't know what we were. We didn't know like- are we, I hope being, are we black? For a brief, for a brief time. time. Oh, we for a brief time. period of time. <sighs> but then once I was able to identify, I ran with it and stuck with it. Okay, so do you feel like- You know, one thing doesn't identify you though. I feel like, you know, I'm black, I'm Ethiopian, I'm Muslim, I'm the first generation. American like you know it's it's all in one it's what makes me me yeah so exactly. so I feel like I don't have an identity crisis necessarily it's just more finding more aspects to your face yourself uh, <laughs> more layers to yourself because yeah. you know and I feel like that has to do with growth experience and just you know uh, in this age, and, and, and that's exactly like a salad bowl, it has multiple layers, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I mean, I think definitely like you, we don't have to be one thing, we can be different things, um, and then. Secondly, incorporate like integrating. I mean, we don't really have to integrate as much because we we're like born here, but continuing to be a part of the American culture too, because there is an American black culture that you know. But I think it's really important to not forget our roots and ha having a foundation, <laughs> having a general foundation of you know who we are. We're Ethiopian. What kind of Ethiopian? Knowing up, knowing yeah, enough about our backstory. We? God forbid if if our parents yeah. passed away tomorrow, we wouldn't us four. Yeah, we don't squat. We okay. don't want. Yeah, we don't want. <laughs> we don't, want language. One, we don't, one, we don't know squat, and two, we have no ties to that country. So think we about do it. have ties. We have living aunts and uncles. Yeah, but even we. We could barely communicate with them. We it's never. Different. We only saw them in two thousand. I feel like you're not really putting a lot of effort yourself. To yeah. I feel like to us, we put more effort. Can you name all mom's brothers and sisters? Yeah, I can. Okay, let's hear. Let's hear. You want to name all of them? No, I can't. Okay, Fatia, 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 <clears throat> Hisham, Munir, this is not in order. No, you're, you have to do it in order. Tusti, Sami, Imaj. You have to do it in order. That's it. That's all of them. No, oh, there's Hassan, Hassan, Hassan. I don't know the Hassan. Never do the Hassan. You never said Samir. I only know him because I never said Samir. You can you guys name oh, yeah. Dads? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I know like four Romana. No, Romana. 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 Hirut. Gurma. Skinder. Um. I know nephews, Robel, and uh, another niece is uh, Mero. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm just saying, like, we barely really have ties after. You barely know. I feel, no, I feel like, like let me finish it talking. It's effort, though, not necessarily an effort. Only get two I know it is effort, but it's like, you know, if I go there, <laughs> you know, <laughs> say God, without, without mom and dad, like, I barely, I barely know them. I wouldn't really feel so comfortable spending my all my 
time with them having them show me around. I can barely relate. We don't have much to talk about. Like, you it's just, they're, effort, you, like, yeah, I, they're, why don't you work? guys try going without mom I did. and dad? I did. Without actually, mom and dad. Okay, but you try it. But, but, but I do think, I do think that now, I think that now, because I went twice in the last two years, and I think going with her has definitely given me a better foundation, where if I did go without her, it would low-key suck, but I think I can do, I can get I can get through it. But I think if I if I hadn't put the effort, even when I got there, the effort to, to make connections, keep maintain my relation with, relationship with them via WhatsApp, even now, recently, like, you know. We, we like, talk to those. Yeah, we, we I, I still regularly talk to like all of our cousins in Ethiopia, well, even on dad's side, even though we didn't grow up with them. I, I actually was recently making the effort to reach out okay, to dad's brother. One, and one, we were, we, one, we were brought up with them. Two, there is a, with me and Iman, compared to the rest of them, a big age gap. Either there's a few that are like a little, like much older, or they're all like way younger than us. So we just like, didn't, we never really saw a need to like talk to them or anything like that. So. Well, on a positive note, um, um, okay, so I guess moving forward, mm -hmm. what are some, what are some things we want to work on to improve? Um, our relationship with our culture. So we all said we're all lacking some well, more think, than others. I think embracing <laughs> Amer I think embracing American black culture because that's something that we're gonna be stuck we're gonna be here with forever. Our kids are gonna be if we raise them in America are gonna be a part of too. So I think that's something that you know we can't forget that that's a part of us. Okay, so I guess our nationality, what are some ways we can um, you know, express our culture and like maintain it so our kids have a strong foundation. Is for me, I, I think learning how to cook Ethiopian food so I can teach that to Serene and also teach it to my other nieces and nephews possibly. Well, I think that we gotta teach it to you first. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do. Yeah, I and then, don't interrupt. <laughs> and then I would teach it to like my other my nieces and nephews that may not have that opportunity because they might be only for yeah, I would love to see she, you take care of one of our kids for an hour. For an hour, an hour I'd love to watch you see you watch. But some of us, some of us may never have kids. Um, I think for me, what I really want to do is learn the language. I mean, it's that been on and answer. off with mom. What that was my answer. Oh, I think it's definitely been on and off with mom because every time you know she tries to speak Islam, we have a little little dispute and then it's like, what'd you say? And I don't know what she said. And then it only goes so far until we break. But I think that that's definitely a long-term goal because I definitely want my kids to learn Gay Sanan. And I'm going to say and Gay Sanan over Amhar. And I say this because Gay Sanan is a very, it's not about useful. Gay Sanan is a very yeah. sacred, exclusive language that can more. only be taught in the home. Yeah. It's not and like, it's like oh, I can go on read. YouTube and be like, let me exactly. learn Gay Sanan. But it's a very exactly. sacred language. Language. Um, Amharic is hard. Um, you can speak Amharic all over the country. Ethiopia. But it's not about. It's not about. It's not even about. Oh, speaking across the country. If if I have that mindset, then the the gay Sanan language will hundred percent die. It's already. Already. It's already. That's not, yeah. See, that's the attitude that, that you cannot have. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And that is, we're all on one side. No, but it's like if you teach. Okay. okay say she's you, teach, you teach your kid. Um. You know, uh, Hari, and then they teach. You teach Hari. You teach gay Sanan. People don't know what Gisnan is. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Adere, Adere culture. Okay, Adere. Gisnan Hari. They teach their kids Hari. By the time our our kids have kids, our grandkids, right? They go to they try to go to Ethiopia. Let's you say you think about your grandkids. Let's say hypothetically, or even our kids, whatever they go they go there. No one speaks it anymore. They're gonna they speak it in the city like of Hutter. They're gonna speak it. But our family doesn't live in Hutter. Even mom's family group in that We they're, don't have any family. There's 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 family. family. And we have Hutter and Hutter. And they're they're not Hutter. But they're not Hutter though. Okay. But they, they, they live in Hutter. It's the same way that your first generation. I'm just saying they're gonna speak English, and it's gonna be like speaking pig Latin in in America. Like no one speaks. No, but you can still honor the language and honor the culture. And actually, and actually, makes you more of an asset. It makes you more of an asset when you when you can speak a language that you. But that that you can't find anywhere else. So you can speak it to yourself. No, no. it's it's, it's a, like I said, it's a very sacred, exclusive language. It can only be taught in the home. If it's not learned in the home, okay, good who's going to teach? Gonna who's going to teach your kids? Because y'all don't speak. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The goal. That's my long-term goal. It's something I'm still working on. Okay. As long as our mom is alive. Yeah. In order to kill culture, you first kill the language. The language already died. And that's why we're not killing. That's why we're not. No, no, no. no, 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 no there okay I can give you hundreds of hundreds of examples of people who um hark was their first language and then they forgot it and then they they, they took the initiative to learn it again mm -hmm. and they made it happen yeah, but it was never our first language I know, I know but it doesn't have to be, have to be. Okay. Okay. Spanish is that some people's second language and they be speaking it all over that's not your like, where what are you talking about? Hola, ¿cómo estás, learned in like yeah. school or learned in yeah, so resources. Yeah, because yes. you take, they take we have initiatives. We have a mother. Mom does never wanted to teach it to 
Yeah, Mom she does want to teach her. If she wanted to, she would have spoken to her. Marvel wants to speak. Ago. Ago. Well, how come she never I'm not to she up there. <laughs> okay. Baruch. Absha. Okay, that's a hard. <laughs> Anyways, so that's the plan. Okay, the plan is to teach my kid. You know what? You know what they say, right? When you speak three languages, you're a trilingual. When you speak two, you're bilingual. When you speak one, you Americano. <laughs> like you are an Americano. I'm first generation. You can't Ethiopian. even read or write anything. I can Except read English. Oh no! Let, 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 let me just you say, with your little hot cats. Oh, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> let me just say, I think I honestly believe that Ethiopia is one of the most amazing countries ever. Like, I'm not even trying to be cringy. The first man there's so there. much. That too. Lucy. There's so much culture and like, and there's just so much like going on in the country and then within the country there's like 70, 80 plus tribes, all these languages, all these different foods, all these different kinds of events. And it's like, how, how why would you not want to embrace that but you want to embrace American culture which is like, so you know what, American culture is made up of our culture and everyone else's. Yeah. I'm, so not, I'm, I'm, saying, I'm not saying American I'm just culture, I'm saying black American culture, which is comprised of different African culture is that your descent so if i took you to answer i don't, I don't understand why can't you do both i'll find a little bit yeah, but I, I, am, I am i am but realistically at this point i don't live i, with like I don't live, easy, no, can I, finish? Can I, I don't live with thing? my parents you get two minutes i don't live with my parents i'm, I'm not really you know in a place <laughs> exactly. i don't live any any place i live don't have a so okay so you live, I don't so live in I florida right i live in florida and la you live in florida and la you're a nomad so you live in Florida and LA. So because you live there, right? And you're actually from Chicago. Are you going to take your jacket everywhere? What? You're going to take your jacket, your winter jacket everywhere. No, because you're from Chicago. No, because I have different things in different cities. Oh, okay. No, but you're from Chicago. So we're supposed to take your deep dish pizza and your your, your jacket with you everywhere. <laughs> right? Funny. <laughs> what I was going to say is your kids. Your kids can learn black American culture here because they live it. They live it yeah. here. So they'll learn it no problem. They'll yeah. learn it in schools. They'll learn, they'll learn it without it. a doubt. I mean, yeah, I'll take them. But you, they'll never be able to learn it. You to have to teach it. Can you, oh, I thought you said you don't have connection. Yeah, I don't. But it's but like, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be, like, it'll it'll be like, just like when you go to, you know, any other country in London, you say, this, let's see this museum and look at these artifacts. And let's go. But you know what? You know what? Any tourist, any tourist, any tourist can do that. But no, like a tourist can go to a rural area or an actual home of someone of that resides in Ethiopia and just walk in there, except folks like us. You know yeah, why? Because we, we have family there. Who's and with that, that, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have anyone who's connected to their family. Okay, I have one set of questions. I'm done with this If, 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 shut up, listen. Okay, if, if, do you guys feel like if we really grew up with the culture, and I mean like super immersed in the culture, like we grew up with the people, we know the language, we know everything about the culture, do you think we would be still be embracing it? And do you think we still would have been like, like, you know, getting away from it and not interested? I think I would think I would still be embracing mm -hmm. it as it I am right now. I feel like I've definitely seen it both ways for yeah, some exactly. people. I've seen some people steer complete opposite direction because they're like, I want to get away from this, you know. Whatever. I'm saying you personally. Oh, no, personally. I don't personally. I feel like I, if I, if I knew all their or like a, a lot of the culture, and I felt like I knew the language and that sort of stuff, I feel like then I would be exploring other stuff that I don't know. Cause you know, you always want to learn what you don't know. Yeah. But but I would still stay connected. It's not in the aspect, a, aspect of like steering clear completely where I have like negative experience of that sort of stuff. But I feel like now not knowing like the language and the culture in the whole, there's more of trying to turn toward that and trying to learn that. I'd just like to say one thing, Ethiopia Hagere. <laughs> oh, okay. Hagere. <laughs> Ethiopia. Okay, well with that being said, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. It's a wrap. Bye. We hope you guys enjoy. Bye. Peace. Subscribe to my channel. Let's not for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's, 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 let's,